guidelines and now in 2000 and the end of 2013-14 the guidelines were set up and so the ethics committee started functioning according to guidelines and from 2011 center for ethics has been training the ethics committee and researchers to follow these guidelines so we have to go through the ethical clearance but many a times we try to take a shortcut we think ethics committee is giving us trouble because they do not give easily ethical clearance so let's start the study and at some other point we ask for ethical clearance but our study is almost complete when we get ethical clearance does that happen sometime yes or no you may not want to raise your hand but you could shake your head i can make up it does happen so but then what happens is if we go back to the data if we go back to the editor's right to call the data back for verification your ethical clearance will show a date, your electronic, all the documents you have collected will show different. So then it would mean that you have started your study even before you got an ethical clearance, which in itself is not ethical. So by and large, research is a planned activity. It is not done in life-saving measures like we do when a person is given on the roadside a CPR. We try to resuscitate. That is the urgency of the healthcare, but that kind of urgency is not in research. So we should not envisage an emergency situation for research and try to take shortcut. By doing so, we are harming the participants. So we should follow the guidelines and follow the approved protocol and responsible conduct in research from the time you take it up. It is a commitment not only to others but to ourselves because this is something that we need to cultivate in what we do because for a publication, you see it has to go through whole of this process. You choose a journal, you avoid going to the predatory journals. The predatory journals will promise you moon but there is nothing from it. It's like a clandestine operation, you will not get credit for it. Access. Predatory journals, it's okay, you can use your own material in any way. Whereas the actual, the, the copyright and the other issues, you should, it should be defined even before. The process of peer reviewing, which is very good when you go to a standard journal. But there is no peer reviewing. You don't learn. You get no hint as to how to improve if you go to predatory journals. It's like in India, there used to be a very common saying, uh, as a teacher, the person who gives you knowledge with kind of uh, being harsh on you, hard on you, is better than somebody who just laughs and ignores all, of, all your mistakes. So we need to look at the rigor of research. If you have a place of people getting back to you with comments, you should be more welcome so that that gives you a change and similar things can be done for your other's papers. Unethical and unscientific research. What would happen? if I did an unethical, unscientific research. In the case of Joachim Wolf from Germany, he published 162 papers. They were all in a very good, acclaimed, internationally peer-reviewed journals. 162 journals. I mean, papers got published. They were cardiologists, the authors, anesthesiologists, named who's who and they were there on his paper. And then the anesthesia guidelines for difficult airway was introduced because of him. The parental nutrition that has to be given when a person is under anesthesia was given by him. But later on, 144 papers were retracted because they were falsified. 144 were retracted and he lost his chair. But the question is, what when the guidelines are already made, you start treating people accordingly, everybody start, follows the procedure, are they not wrongful deaths because of somebody's careless way to gain what they want to? Are they not taking somebody else's life? who come to hospital for seeking cure and you want to give standard treatment and your standard is based on substandard research. Because many a times we ignore the fact 
then our observation, our study, which we just give us promotion, can have can be of danger to others. So in this whole spectrum of misconduct, research misconduct, it just starts with plagiarism and falsification, but it doesn't stop there. It's a slippery slope. At every level, if people are doing that, then what quantum of knowledge should be taken as a knowledge with a pinch of salt that this can be relied upon? Because that would mean you are risking your lives in healthcare on a research because somebody just wanted a paper and not to do a research well. Similarly, publications if you want to do, make sure you have one objective, two objective, one paper out of it. Don't try to make it a salami publication. Content. It's so authentic to stick to the content that you have done because it comes of your study. But if you want to fabricate evidences, if you want to fabricate knowledge, then it's very easily traceable. Author. I am the author or there is a guideline for authorship. Those who has, have contributed to the paper, those who have helped in conceptualizing and development of the paper, those, those who have carried out the research and those who have helped you with analysis to conclusion to critical way, and these are the areas where the authorship is given. But not because he knows me, not because he's my head, not because he's related to me, or this person is needs a promotion and it's his life and death situation, so we need to give it. So these are not the motives enough to give authorship to people. And ownership is something about the data that you think of, you have done it, and you cannot just pass it on around. And ownership of the ideas, that's why we don't want others plagiarizing on your idea. So plagiarism is something we need to look time and again. At times I feel sometimes, before you submit it, you don't lose anything to run through the plagiarism check. You may not even want to do it personally, but you are influenced by somebody, some quotation, some saying. Some people have a photographic memory. They read a paragraph and they are able to write just the way it is. It's good that they have such a memory, but their content is not theirs. So they need to account for it. And then the authorship guidelines especially, don't give away authorship, guest authorship, giving it to anybody you want, ghost authorship, somebody who has really written, but is nowhere on the scene, like a postgraduate. He has left the institute, all his data is there, everything is there, so I publish it. That's a ghost authorship. So there is also a need to publish and after you have published you need to disseminate the results. We have taken participants in this study from different strata of society. Some of them are poor, very poor and you have made some nutritional study, you have finished your study. So the person who is a participant is not going to read your scientific study. He won't even have access to your journal. So what way have you benefited him? is when you go back to the community and disseminate the results. This is what I found from your results. So you have to be authentic in relation to the participants that you have made use, so you have to go back and disseminate the results of the study. The person who causes evil to others not only by his action but by his inaction also. And in either case, he is justly accountable for them and for the injury. So if we are responsible for causing by our inaction also, if we know that such result is fraudulent, then we will be guilty. So we are coming to the end of this uh, discussion on now uh, plagiarism, art of art and ethics. And in the end we need to reiterate one thing. The research is supposed to benefit it is supposed to add knowledge, but authentic knowledge and benefit fellow humans. It's not that it has to benefit me so I can do it at the cost of using others as participants. So as we come to the end of this, I have still a video actually, if I can show that. Nope, that's still plagiarism. The easiest way to avoid plagiarism 
is to ask yourself, does the information that's in front of you need credit? There are four easy areas to figure this out. Number one, if the words or the ideas that you're using came from a magazine, a book, a newspaper, a song, a TV show, a movie, a website, a game, an email, or an advertisement, you need to give credit. If the information that you're using came from an interview or a conversation, believe it or not, you need to give credit for it. Third, if you use exact words, if you write verbatim, meaning word for word, you need to use quotation marks. You also need to tell the teacher where it came from. Finally, if you use a chart, a drawing, or a photo, make sure that you give credit for that. After all, it's not yours. Using quotation marks is very easy to do. In fact, as an example, let's go back and use that story from John Smith one more time about Pennsylvania. Suppose that somewhere in your sentence, you decided that you wanted to mention that Pittsburgh was an important city. If you use the phrase important city, you need to put that in quotation marks. You need to tell your teacher that someone else came up with that first. Suppose that you want to use a chart, a drawing, or a photograph. That's okay, but make sure that you tell where it came from. Somewhere near the photo or the chart, make sure that you write the word source. And then right next to that, put a colon. After the colon, make sure that you say where it came from. Make sure that you tell your teacher who came up with that drawing or photo or chart first. It could be a video game publisher. It could also be a website. The important thing is to list it. Three things to remember when it comes to plagiarism is this. Number one, if you go word for word, if you go verbatim, make sure that you use quotation marks. Number two, paraphrasing is using your own words. Make sure that you do that. And number three, possibly most importantly, make sure that you tell your teacher where the information came from. You should be using both in-text citations and a works cited page. We talk about those in another video. It is possible to not have to list something. Suppose you are using something that's known as common knowledge. That's where you wouldn't really have to give credit for something. As an example, if you stated that the United States flag has 50 stars on it, you really shouldn't have to tell your teacher where you found that. That's something that everyone should know. But if it's something that's not common knowledge, make sure that you tell your teacher where it is.